So as someone's listening and maybe they're saying, yeah, that that's me. I went off the hamster wheel, as you called it, but it can feel like I, I don't know another way. I don't know how. But if somebody wants to get off and they're not sure where and how to start, and maybe they don't feel like they can start with a whole day, a Sabbath rest sort of thing, where would you tell them to take a baby step that they could take in the next 24 hours after listening that would allow them to get started on that path? Yeah. The first thing that I would probably do is, I alluded to this earlier, is look at your calendar tomorrow and is there an opportunity for you to shorten one of your one hour meetings to 45 minutes and then take that 15 minutes that you just gave yourself back and instead of doing what you would qualify as work, maybe take a walk, maybe open mm-hmm. your Bible, read a, read the verse of the day mm-hmm. out of you version and just yeah. meditate on that for a couple minutes, but do something that you wouldn't qualify as work for. And it could be as simple, Kenny, as getting up and walking across the building to where the refrigerator is and getting a bottle of water. And instead of coming straight back to your desk, maybe walk around the building. But the longer answer to that, that that's something they could probably do tomorrow. The longer answer would be maybe this weekend when you're resting on Sunday or Saturday, whenever you find your time to rest and truly sit down on the couch and maybe even have your day timer out so you can say you're working. But what I would, and I would go back to something you said a few minutes ago about operating out of the, your best moments of the day. I know for me personally, I'm a morning person. I don't get up out of bed singing and whistling and I'm not in a good mood when I first wake up, but I love the mornings because they're quiet. I love the dark. I love getting up and having coffee. And, but I know that for me, the best time of day is generally between 6 a.m. and about one or two o'clock in the afternoon. I'm going to do my front stage work, my primary work. I'm going to schedule my appointments. I'm going to do all the heavy lifting on my day. I'm going to try to schedule it between those hours. And then after two o'clock, that's when you can do some of the other things that maybe it's cleaning up email or scheduling your day for the next day or the next week or whatever. But do that in your off peak hours that doesn't require as much brain energy between the four inches between your ears that you referenced earlier. Do those kind of things in your off peak hours. And I think just by making that shift alone, Instead of this mindset of I have to work eight to five, maybe you don't. Maybe your best time is eight to noon. Maybe your best time is from one to four. Maybe your best time, I don't get these people, but because I'm not one of them, but maybe your best time is from three o'clock in the afternoon until eight o'clock at night or from five o'clock in the afternoon until 11 o'clock at night. Whatever your best time is, that's when you schedule your heavy lifting for yourself, for your business. And then in the off peak hours, that's when you want to, take those walks or do that meditation or Mm -hmm. practice your guitar or go for a run or ride your bike or spend time with your wife or go, go for a walk with your grandson. Those are the moments when you're off peak hour. Not that you don't want to give your best time to your family. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm talking specifically about work, the work Monday through Friday work week. Yeah. Schedule your week around your best, your top peak performing hours and then schedule the other stuff in your off-peak hours. And I think if mm. you do that, you'll find yourself with opportunities to rest and recover and not be exhausted. 